Hi. Hello, okay. everyone. <laughs> so we are here again. Uh, it's Shalini. I'm Ellie. And today we have Marta with us. Uh, she's one of the senior professors here at Reykjavik University. Uh, Marta, do you want to introduce yourself and give a uh, short like what you're doing and what you're teaching here? Yeah, my name is Marta Kristi Laurisdottir and uh, I'm a associate professor uh, in the computer science department. My main field has been human computer interaction. So I have been teaching courses in that field since uh, mm -hmm. the autumn 2000 when I started to teach at Reykjavik University. And actually then I was in a maternity leave uh, from industry. So I started my career in industry. Um, I was a project manager and um, usability specialist um, and worked um, doing that for five or six years. Uh, but I really enjoyed teaching, so when they um, offered me a permanent position, I, I took that after doing teaching and, and um, the industry in parallel for one year. So I started a permanent position um, in January 2002 at RU. Uh, so I have been following uh, RU, how it has changed over the years and, and how it has evolved yeah. and it has been a great journey i actually didn't know you used to be in the industry that's very interesting yeah. um yeah okay and uh your subjects i assume it was very compatible from uh, usability testing to human computer interaction I, are they similar uh, from the industry to your I mean, the transition is it is it easier uh, from I, it's not easier I know but how how is it from industry to here teaching? Mm. So you know um, um, it has evolved uh, tremendously. Um, so I started my university studies in uh, 1984, uh, doing a bachelor in computer science. Uh, I took one and a half years and I was not sure this was for me uh, because I thought it was, um, I found it easy uh, to do the math and do the programming and so on, but I was, I, I didn't really have this like um, passion for it, you could say. Uh, so I wanted to know how it was to work. Uh, so I took one year off and I was working and then I found it more interesting. So I finalized the computer science studies um, in 1989 uh, and working in parallel. Um, and at that time, you know, the, the scene was totally different. Um, we had only, we had screens uh, for designing the, uh, you know, the user interface, which were uh, like black, and you had green uh, letters, and that was all, you know, there was no color. Yeah. <laughs> only this one color, green letters, black uh, background. Yeah. Uh, and, okay, uh, it's 40 years ago, but still, it's not that really, really long time, you know? Yeah. Um, and then we, of course, we, we didn't have any mobile equipment, or it, it was starting there in 1990. So I experienced one um, laptop, which was like a huge sewing machine. You could uh, imagine it was for trolls or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> really big people because it was heavy and, and it wasn't, I, I found it really hard to move it. So, um, and the screen was very small. So everything has evolved a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I started my master uh, degree in Copenhagen University in 1991 and uh, there again uh, the equipment was quite old-fashioned. We only had servers and we had like uh, labs that where we could go and, and connect to the servers uh, but uh, 
yeah, and, and when doing our thesis, we had to, you know, format it uh, similar to Overleaf now. Yes, but <laughs> I don't like Overleaf. So it was it was really like programming what you wanted if it you, if you wanted it bold and uh, italic and everything mm -hmm. like that. So um, I, I feel the the feet has really changed and especially the human computer interaction field. Yeah. So when I was studying uh, for my master's in the computer science department at, um, at the Copenhagen University, they gave the first uh, course on human computer interaction. So it was really starting there as a subject. And that when I returned and uh, I, I specialized in this field, so I did my master thesis on comparing methods of uh, evaluating uh, how easy it was to users uh, for users to use systems, and I compared if uh, one method was better than the other method, and you know how 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 the how we could understand if it was easy or not. And when I returned to industry, they were like asking me like, why are you thinking about the users, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, who cares about the users? You're using your time on that? Mm -hmm. you wow. Know, I'm, I'm making the database now, so actually you are disturbing me. Oh. So this, this is actually one reaction that I got when I was like, um, I was involved in making a big project for Asia, so we were doing um, a big um, software system that we sold to Hong Kong and we sold it to uh, Australia. And I was so eager to know like, okay, so who are the users? Are they mm -hmm. using it all day long or are, do they just do, use it like 10 minutes a day? And how do they think and what do they want to do? And, and he was like, why are you thinking about this? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. So this was the reaction at that time. This was uh, 1996, seven, you know? Wow. So it has changed a lot. I think yeah. now people really um, um, admit that you have to think about the users. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, it's still a spectrum. Some people think that you only have to like think about them, but not talk too much to them because that takes time. But then um, many people think, of course, you have to involve them to understand and uh, get a better system. And that's quite natural. So, but um, in 19, uh, when I was finishing my master's there in 1996, it was quite new to everybody. Um, people were so occupied in understanding the technology and what was uh, you know, and everything was evolving so fast. So um, I think this was like an addition that people hadn't really time to think about. But now people have realized that this can be actually make or break, um, especially if you have a product that is a huge competition to another product. This can be the thing that um, really sells your um, things yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and uh, so like I expect yeah like these are opinion these are like things I've never heard before that somebody wouldn't care about the users uh, but uh, I assume that both the community that developed um, software but also the users have changed a lot since then both like in uh, what they want to do with computers and also like who they are and what what is it? So now a computer science degree is super common. Lots of people take it uh, more from more backgrounds, from more like more diverse. While I expect back then maybe like it was mostly like very specific people into math, like science, not, it wasn't the most common subject maybe. Well, when I uh, started to study there in 1984, there were quite a lot of people studying computer science because it was getting okay. quite, yeah, it was popular because it was new, it was something mm -hmm. like, you know, that, that could be something that could make a difference. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think 
we were at least as many as people studying um, engineering at that time. Okay, okay. And, and, um, and it was also nice that uh, we, uh, one fourth of the students were female, so uh, it was not that odd that I chose to study oh, okay. computer science at that time. And, and um, you know, and we made so, sort of a community and we still meet. Uh, so oh, that's, oh, that's nice. Yeah. So that's very nice. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I think many people were in the same situation as me. I, I thought when I was choosing to study computer science, I thought like, okay, this is a profession where I could easily move between countries because the programming languages, they are not like um, our languages that mm -hmm. you, you can actually use the same languages in uh, all over the world. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and I, I imagine that I could like move between countries and, and uh, um, work wherever I wanted to. Um, and also I saw the possibility of being quite flexible in the time when I would um, work. Mm -hmm. But you're right that uh, my, I imagined that I would be mostly doing like uh, business systems, like uh, something for the banks or something, you know, calculating something or, um, yeah, uh, using the computers to do like heavy, heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and not, I, I didn't imagine that it would be in the phones and in the cars and on, and on the fridge and, and <laughs> wherever, you know, I, that, that was not in my imagination. And even, you know, I didn't even imagine that we could meet like this, you know. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I always imagined that I would have to move to another country yeah. and be mm -hmm. there to be able to work there. But now I, I work with people in Finland, Sweden, uh, England, you know, uh, the same day. So yeah. I I'm, I'm I joke about that with my family. Uh, like, oh yeah, I've been in Finland this morning and I'm heading for Sweden <laughs> this afternoon, or, you know. Uh, so, and it's easy because we found out how to program that. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you want to travel as a young uh, scientist? Yeah, I, I thought that was that was interesting, and that was one of the the things that uh, fascinated me about the profession. That it's quite um, the education of computer science is quite international. Yeah. You know? and, and I thought that was one of the positive things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely yeah. agree. I, that's one of the also, things yeah, like we, we, we are in a different country than where we started. <laughs> yeah, but also it's, uh, yeah, traveling to other countries and explore other things. That's one of the biggest uh, point of um, not, I, I think most of the uh, like subjects nowadays offer this, but I think computer science is one like it's, it has more to it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I, I believe that. And uh, like, uh, so you went from the industry to teaching yep. and like, I assume at least you must have been one of the first, oh, we have a story. Uh, um, I assume, yeah, like, especially as a professor in the Department of Computer Science at Reykjavik University, maybe in the beginning, you must have been only one of the few uh, female staff members. Uh, and. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yes, is that right? Oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, so like, is that like, uh, did that like entail some pressure for you, some uh, stress, some certain conditions, or was it just like, it's an open community, it doesn't mean anything? Yeah. Well, in the industry, I also worked uh, dominantly with males, and I, I don't see any problems with that. Um, uh, and when I started, um, there were two or three other females in the in the um, fa as faculty members at uh, computer science, uh, and this is how it has been. But I was um, I felt the pressure of being the specialist in human computer interaction, and 
um, I thought that the courses, and I didn't have anybody to collaborate with um, how to structure the courses and so on here at Reykjavik University, but I had a lot of people um, in collaboration with people all over the world um, through um, uh, collaboration sponsored by the European Union called Cost Actions. So I actually was uh, the Icelandic member in, in a cost action from 2005 to 2013. So I met uh, people from Europe in, I can't remember, it was around 30 countries, members from 30 countries. Um, and we met uh, twice or three times a year. And there I could ask them like, what books are you teaching and what functions and so on. So I, I have been, um, lucky enough to be able to uh, meet them people um, in other countries and work with them. Uh, so I haven't felt that isolated. Um, oh. I, I've managed and then I also have uh, had a great collaboration with a lady, a professor in human computer and action in at the University of Iceland. Mm -hmm. And then in 2008, I started my PhD studies um, in parallel with um, teaching at Reykjavik University. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was that came also out of a collaboration with um, people in Sweden. Mm -hmm. So I started my studies at Uppsala University oh. and did one degree there called Licentiate. And then I did the uh, final PhD degree at KTH. Mm -hmm. So I, I've actually gathered like four universities <laughs> um, uh, to conclude my PhD. Uh, okay. University of Iceland, uh, Copenhagen University, Uppsala University and KTH. Uh, and it, it has been nice to uh, travel, you know, be on all these places and experience the different uh, culture uh, in the academia. It's hmm. nice. Yeah. yeah. And you mentioned like you have lots of collaborators in this field of human computer interaction. Do you feel like there's some sort of um, inclination so that like women kind of focus in computer science, they end up somehow more in contact with humans, the human side of computer science or is it yeah because like there are some stereotypes or or not necessarily stereotypes just like where how what do you see around you in the community so yeah so when i go to international conferences uh it's 50 50 male females uh, on on the international you know like the biggest conference in the field is called CHI, uh, Computer Human Interaction. It's uh, held yearly and you have 3,000, 3,500 participants every year. And it's very, very uh, balanced, uh, women and men. So, but you could think so if you look, only look at like Reykjavik University, uh, Iceland, because there's one professor in human computer interaction at uh, the University of <laughs> Iceland, <laughs> at Reykjavik University, and we are yeah. all famous, but I think yeah. that, that is just um, yeah, like a small number yeah. of few. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting one male that is very interested in human computer interaction that will start in the autumn, and, and we also have Hannes Hockney that is super interested in, in human behavior. So I don't think this is a um, a female thing. I see that in in the courses uh, that I give, I maybe get a greater proportion of the females. Um, so I don't like get one fourth. I get maybe half um, the students in my courses are females and half are males. But it's not like all of them are females. Oh, so, of course, that's yeah. Uh, and yeah. Uh, I don't know. Of course, you could say it, it's more like social science and sometimes uh, you, you can see that uh, females are more interested in that, but uh, yeah, in, in other cases I, I see 50-50, so it's, mm -hmm. I think yeah, it's more on the like, personal interest level. Yeah, 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 Does course. it mean the same? I mean, you've been teaching for a lot of 
for a long time. Uh, is it is that it has been the same uh, this 50 50 ratio or do you think more uh, people are coming uh, more women are coming nowadays to study not only human interaction but computer science in general. No, um, it has stayed similar actually. That there was a drop around 2000, but then, then the, uh, there was a drop in the uh, total number. Um, so then there was a crisis, there was not as easy to get jobs, um, and the software companies were actually. Um, uh, how is it called? Yeah, okay. They they didn't hire as much, at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and then again in two thousand and eight, uh, we had the drop again, and then uh, we had two or three years where we didn't have as uh, high numbers of female students as the years before. But then this has balanced again. So it, I, my feeling is that it's you know, often around one fourth, 25%, 30%, something like that. Okay, yeah. I think, yeah, for me, I come from an engineering school, so there are things that are different. So uh, there's a huge difference in ratio. There's a huge difference, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, depending on the engineering subject, of course. But yeah, it's, it's nice to see people coming into computer science and each one giving what they like having something to give in their own way, like mm -hmm. if you're more social, if you're more math brain or something, yeah. then it's about, you'll find your yeah. thing to, to give. Exactly, finding your thing, not yeah, mixing with everyone. Yeah. All right. And um, uh, yeah, so we're about to conclude, I think. Yes. So is there like any last words, any like punchline you'd like to give to the <laughs> viewers from your side? Okay, so uh, so if you if the viewers are um, are computer science students, I would encourage them to um, include the users in all all the activities and and uh, try to include the users early on. If they start a brand new project, um, the best thing is to try to understand the user's needs by meeting them, not by imagining it, by going to them and talk to them, uh, maybe observe them. Um, there's uh, one thing uh, uh, called mirroring, just like following uh, one person one day. So there are lots of um, methods that we can use to understand the needs of people that are will be using the systems that we are developing and okay it takes time and um, maybe you think it's expensive but it can also save you a lot of time because you can find out that uh, something that you thought the users would like they don't like at all and they don't uh, they wouldn't use it so you won't have to program it or, or do anything about it so and that saves time mm -hmm. so i think it's so um you gain so much time even though you maybe think you don't um by including the users early on mm -hmm. uh, then sketching um prototypes um getting people to to um use like the paper just point on the paper and, and write in the insert fields and um, and I've been trying, you know, I, this is what I have been really, have been my mission to teach computer sci science students to use these techniques to, um, to understand how they can do the system so that the users um, can use it in an easily manner. Uh, so it will be easy. Um, um, yeah, effective and uh, and they can use it fast, and they will be satisfied when when using the system. Yeah, 
I don't know what um, type of listeners you imagine. Um, anyone, really. anyone. As, <laughs> as long as they want to meet yeah. you, I well, think. Yeah. <laughs> so it's fun, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It matters to take into your account the opinion of the users. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, we need people that are willing to research, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what ways are best, mm -hmm. uh, what really gives us value, because we, we really want to understand, okay, so how can we tell the industry that, uh, like, doing uh, paper prototyping and evaluating that with users actually gives value? Uh, it's valuable for them. Uh, we have to be able to do these research to be able to um, have proofs. Um, so we need also people um, interested in doing these these kind of studies. Uh, and I think maybe we we could also be better in doing instructions of how to use these all these methods that are out there or and uh, tools to help the uh, IT professionals um, using these methods. Mm -hmm. So there's a, like a long list of possibilities, both for people wanting to do to, to research in the area, uh, help uh, both developers and users. Mm -hmm. That's a yeah. very nice That's, yeah. insight into the field. Of That's a good advice. Research. Whoever is listening and thinking about joining research, yeah. or it, it should help them. Yeah. 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 So thank you, Marta, for joining us. And yeah. thank you to our viewers for watching us. Yes. See you uh, next time. See you next time. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.